Should we trust the history that's in the Old Testament? I mean, the Old Testament tells us this extensive history of this family, this guy Abraham, and then all his descendants. They end up becoming this entire people group, the Israelites, and then they're enslaved in Egypt, and then they are brought by God out of slavery, and then they go to what is now modern-day Israel, and they end up becoming this very powerful kingdom with King David, King Solomon, and then there's this entire history as this country starts to fall apart, and there's all these events and battles, and I mean, there's an extensive amount of story, historical story in the Old Testament. But for a lot of it, we don't have corroborating external things uh, outside the Old Testament to verify if all these events occurred. So what should we do uh, when we have something like the Exodus or the reign of King David? Should we just take the Bible's word for it if there's not other corroborating evidence, any other evidence outside the Bible to suggest that it's true? Well, I think there's a couple things that I would point to for reasons why we should consider that the stories in the Old Testament may be true. The first thing is, I, maybe this goes to that saying, but the fact that there's not other evidence for it does not mean that it didn't occur. Absence of evidence doesn't negate the story. So I think it would be one thing if we had some type of evidence that said, for, I don't even know exactly what type of evidence this would be, but if we had extensive historical records of uh, Egypt or the area of um, Israel, and it said that for sure King David never lived. Um, that would be concerning because the Bible says King David lived and ruled. That would be a problem. But if we have no evidence from uh, outside the Bible, but then the Bible says King David lived and reigned, well, that it means that the King David may possibly have been a king. It's possibly true. We don't have to reject it only because there's not external evidence. Uh, secondly, I think we can look at the, the fact that there is some evidence to suggest that some of the historical stories in the Old Testament are true. We can't verify every single point, every single claim of the Old Testament, but some things we can back up, like the idea that there was a King David. We don't have a lot of external evidence for what happened during his reign, but we do have a Babylonian record after, his, after the time of David referring to one of the subsequent kings, and they, the Babylonians describe him as of the house of David, king of the house of David. So it would suggest that David may have been a real person who really lived, and he created, started a dynasty that continued until the Babylonians created this record referring to the house of David. So this small bit of evidence, even though, oh man, wouldn't it be great to have an entire external secular record of King David's reign, could suggest that these stories in the Old Testament may be true. Basically, when we have evidence, it seems to suggest that it's consistent with what we see in the Old Testament. So the fact that we don't have everything corroborated doesn't mean that we can discount the fact that when we have corroborative evidence, it seems to point to the idea that the Old Testament is actually pretty good history. Now, why wouldn't we have more history. Why wouldn't they, if they're, all these people are living and dying, these empires are rising and falling, wouldn't we have more historical records? Well, that may or may not be true. We definitely see that the further back in history we go, there are less and less people groups that keep historical records and the extent to which, even if they are um, writing history or their history has survived till today, it may not be as extensive as like today. It's easy. I, Imagine it's easy for us to write down every thought that we possibly could have on our phones so we can create a record really easily, but in the past, it wasn't always like that. In terms of what evidence we have today, there's a few people group that we have pretty good history of, but there are many people group that we have little to no history from the actual peoples themselves. One of these people that we have good history from is the Babylonians. There's lots of archeological evidence. There's writings from the Babylonian empire. The problem is that the Babylonian Empire only existed in a certain area. During the time of King David, for example, the Babylonians were not active in the area of Israel. So there's no, re there's no Babylonian, we can't go to the Babylonian records and say, hey, what did they say about King David? Didn't they know him? Well, they may have never interacted with him because they were not present. The empire was not operating in the area of Israel during the time that David was alive. But later, when they do enter the 
area of Israel, you do see uh, this reference to King David through his descendant, as they mentioned that this guy is the king of the house of David. That's in an, a uh, piece of archaeological evidence called the Tel Dan inscription. So I think what's the problem is that if we're looking for a, a the ancient record of the people who lived in Israelite Israel, the Israelites, well, we we may have that in the form of the Bible. But if we're looking for something outside of the Bible, then we're probably going to look for other people groups. We're looking for non-Jews writing about the Jews. Well, we're only going to see that in the people groups that interact with them. And if those people aren't interacting, or the people that they are interacting with, those people who don't have records from, well, then there's just not a source that we could go to to find out about them. Now, hopefully in the future, further archaeology will uncover more writings or more artifacts, and maybe we'll know more about the gaps in the historical record that we currently see. But so far, the archaeology that we are finding, the records that we are finding, seem to be consistent with the history that's taught in the Bible. So when there's an area of the Bible that there's some question about, I've got to ask myself, hey, should I accept that there really was a King David, a King Solomon? Should I accept that there may have been an exodus of Jews fleeing slavery in Egypt? Well, I don't have as much of a problem accepting that because I know that when I can test the story, it appears to be true. So in those areas where I can't test the story, I feel pretty confident in trusting the Bible.